everyone, welcome back to Narayana Group. I hope you all are doing well. I'm your host Deep Jyoti and with me I have Arpita. Today we are here to answer the frequently asked questions about NSAT that stands for Narayana Scholastic Aptitude Test. So let me give you a brief introduction about NSAT. So NSAT is an all India examination that is conducted pan India to motivate the young minds and the brightest minds of the country with some scholarships and cash rewards. So now let's dive deep into the discussion with the most basic question that why NSAT and why should a student take NSAT examination? Uh, that's a great question Deep and uh, let me tell you NSAT is not just a regular test. NSAT as you already said stands for Narayana Scholastic Aptitude Test and this is a 19th edition of NSAT and the Narayana group has been known to nurture young minds, even the brightest minds in the country for the past 45 years now. Right. And NSAT has a lot of benefits. Uh, talking about the first benefit is that it eases off the financial burden of the students. Correct. Um, it is offering scholarships and cash towards to the students who perform well in the examination right so for their education it's going to be a big add-on right and uh, secondly if you come to the benefit of NSAT I'd like to say it gives the students the confidence you know to just go out there and achieve ranks and then in the future when they're going to appear for even better competitive examinations then I think then they're going to just be the best out there right right that will boost their confidence to appear for those examinations exactly Correct. so the confidence and also the financial burden is easy Right, when they right. appear for NSAT and now that we know that these are all the benefits that NSAT has to offer most of the students would like to know that how NSAT is going to be conducted so Deep can you just tell our students about how NSAT is going to be conducted right so talking about the conduction of NSAT we need to understand four different things regarding NSAT that is the examination mode examination language examination pattern and the examination test center right so let's talk about the examination mode so it will be in dual mode that is offline and online so when i say offline and online most of the students in the webinar were asking ma'am that i can appear for both offline and online right so that is not the case you cannot appear for both the modes you can either appear in offline or the online mode of the examination now Coming to the examination language, so the examination language has to be a language which all the students across India from the north to the south or the east to the west knows and are well aware of. So what better than English, right? So the examination instructions and assessments, all, everything will be given in English. Now coming to the examination pattern. So see, Arpita, this is a competitive examination, right? So what a competitive examination will it be if we don't have negative marking? So yes, there is a negative marking. So for this examination, we'll be having 40 questions. That is 40 MCQs. Now MCQs stand for multiple choice questions. So now what question or what sort of questions will be having? So for a question will be given four different options and you have to choose only one. That is single correct option will be there. Now 40 MCQs are there. So for every correct response will be getting four marks while for every incorrect response one mark will be deducted. That is plus four for the correct and minus one for the incorrect. Now Arpita we have 40 questions right. So what will be the total marks? Obviously it's going to total up to 160. Right. So the student who scores the highest in 160 will be getting the rank 1 and then there will be the consecutive ranks, right? Now let's talk about the exam centers. This test center thing was the mostly asked question in the webinar and they were like, ma'am, can I do it here or can I do it in my city or like okay, that? Okay. So for the test center, Arpita, see, we have listed down a couple of test center and each of the test center is mentioned clearly on our NSAT website. That is nsat.narayanagroup.com. Student can have a look at the different test center. So if in case students, if you find that yes, the test center is near to you, you can anyways choose the offline mode of examination and go to the test center and write the exam. But if it is not near, what the student would do? They'll take online mode, right? Because we have different dates for the online mode of examination and it's very comfortable. You can give the examination at your room, at your ease and at your comfort. So now I have mentioned about the dual mode of the examination. That yes, is the offline yes. and online. So now Arpita, tell me 
that will the benefits be same for both the offline and online or have we differentiated anything here? For sure, there's a clear differentiation for the students who are appearing for the offline mode of examination, they will be awarded both cash rewards and scholarships. But when it comes to the students who have applied for or opted for the online mode of examination, they will be only getting the scholarships. Right. And these scholarships will be up to 70%. Right. But let's say that they want to increase this amount of scholarships, then what they have to do is just appear for one more round of interview. So if they appear for one more round of interview with our panel, then we will be awarding them with a scholarship that is higher based on their merit. Right. Let's say so, they might get uh, hmm. so 80%. If they, right, right, right. So hmm. if they're, depending upon the performance, their scholarship will be given. Amount will be raised, right? Yes, yes, the amount will be raised. Right. But when it comes to the offline mode, you know, there's a better advantage that the students who have applied for the offline mode, their scholarships can go up to 100%. That's great. Okay, so for uh, offline students, it goes up to 100%. And there are cash rewards also. And the cash rewards can go up to 1 lakh rupees. That's okay, great. so... So this is an added advantage that the offline students have over the online students. But there are also certain terms and conditions that the students have to know before they opt for the offline and online and what uh, are the certain uh, conditions that will be applied, right? There are some rules to it. Right. Uh, so Deep, can you explain to us about the rules or the terms and conditions for these scholarships and cash awards? Uh, right. So the rules are always there. We have... If we play any game, we go and we are always, we always abide by the rules, right? So why not in NSAT? So the terms and conditions or the rule says that if you are appearing for the, let's say, cash reward. So with the cash reward, what you can do with the cash reward, right? So the cash reward will be disbursed to your bank account in four different equal installment, right? Four different installments and all the installments will be equal. And with this cash reward, you have to take admission to the year-long classroom course or program where at a Narayana coaching center. And now, what is the last date to avail this cash reward? So, it is 31st of December 2024. So, if in case you make up your mind, let's say on 1st of January, so will you be able to get that? Obviously not. Right. right. So make sure that you register yourself into a classroom course by the 31st of December if they have to avail this the, uh, uh, cash reward. Cash rewards. Right. Now coming to the scholarship part. So the scholarship part will be given, all the students will, who are getting the scholarship, be it the offline or the online students, they can avail the scholarship again at the Narayana classroom course or we have one more thing that is the live classes. So we also have a live class as running so you can avail the scholarship in either of them and you have to avail the scholarship before 15th of January 2025. So after that, whosoever comes, the scholarship is not applicable. So for the students coming on the 16th, this won't be... There, uh, there won't be any scholarship. You can just take the admission by paying the full fees. But if you want to avail like 70% or 100%, whatsoever the scholarship amount you have gotten, you have to come by 15th of January 2025. And this admission has to be done for the 2025-26 session. Batch, right. So the, all the students have to remember that, that they're not enrolled into any of the Narayana coaching centers batches for 25-26 year. And also this is not applicable for the students who are what? part of Narayana schools School, already. Right. Correct. Correct. So yeah. this was... The school students or the existing coaching students who have already paid the fees for the next academic year, they cannot avail the scholarships or the cash reward. Now since we have talked about the cash rewards and the benefits, the students who want to do good in the examination, they need to know the syllabus, right? So Arpita, would you throw some light on the syllabus? Uh, so for the students who want to do well in the INSAT examination, as we've already discussed, so... NSAT examination will be an all India test and it's not going to be easy. Right. So therefore we have a designated syllabus for each grade and for all the students who are looking forward for their preparations, their sample papers and the exam syllabus that is uploaded on the website that is nsat.narayanagroup.com and all of the students can go there, take a look and download the syllabus as well as download some sample papers and practice it as well. Right, that's good. Now, Arpita, do you know what, while I was doing the webinar, a lot of students flooded me with the question regarding the OMR, like the offline students. So they were like, ma'am, pen, pencil, pen, then which colored pen, red, blue, green, yellow. So like, tell, take us through the OMR, that how to do with the OMR, how to fill it, which colored pens are allowed and not. 
Yeah, this is actually a question that has been asked by most of the students that what are the colors of pens? Shall we take a pencil or a pen? So let me tell you in the first place, no pencils are allowed and not red pens. So you can only take a black or a blue pen and right. that has to be a ballpoint pen. Right. So a ballpoint pen with a thicker nib. Okay, you can go directly to your shopkeeper and ask him for an OMR, OMR sheet OMR. filling form. Right. right. So Yeah, OMR pen we can ask him. Yeah, they can give us that uh, thicker nib pen. Yes, yes. Yeah. And if they take that thicker nib pen, then they'll be able to, you know, mark all the circles properly. So all you have to do is, let's say this question one, it has four options, obviously, right. and the correct option is option four. So what you have to do is you have to darken option four. And then for question two, if the option is two, if you think it's correct, then darken option two. Right. That is how they have to fill in the OMR. Right. And it is mandatory for them to, you know, leave the answer sheet or the OMR sheet clean. They cannot put any stray marks there. So any stray marks are not allowed in the answer sheet, apart from them filling their roll numbers or their details and the answers that they're opting for. And gel pen is also not allowed for yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. No gel pen is also no allowed. No gel pens, no pencil, no, right? No. Only black and blue in yes, dark yes, pen. Yes, that is what is allowed. No pencils also are allowed. Right. And if they're opting for the online mode, if you want to know how to appear for the online mode of examination, we would suggest there's a video on it, a complete video on it. Just go and watch it on our channel today. Yeah, that's great. And uh, now that we know about how, you know, they're filling up their OMR forms and all, uh, a lot of students actually were also concerned about them not getting their admit cards or them suffering from not getting the registration numbers. If they've registered, what is the issue that is coming up? So Deep, can you shed some light on what are their processes that how they're going to register if they've not registered yet? And if they've already registered, what is the admit card number and how they have to go about it? Please. Yeah, so admit card was the very hot topic in the entire webinar that we took. So a lot of students asked regarding the registration and the admit card. So coming to the registration, you can anyways get yourself registered five days before the examination. And again, to register yourself, you need to go to the nsat.narayanagroup.com. That's our website, guys. Now coming to post-registration thing. So let's say you have registered yourself, you must have registered yourself using a mobile number, right? So student kindly keep this in mind that you have to keep your mobile number active, right? Correct. It should be active and it should be with you because for downloading the admit card, you need the OTP. So your mobile number should be active. That is the first condition. And now once you have registered, you must have gotten a unique number or the unique ID. That is nothing but your application number to your mobile in the SMS. Right. So once you have gotten that, you take that number, go to the website. What is the website? Nsat.narayanagroup.com. So go to that website and put in your application number, your mobile number and your date of birth. And you'll be able to get the OTP and then you can download your admit card. So now this is all about the downloading of admit card. And I think with this, we have answered almost all the frequently asked questions on the top rated questions. Isn't it, Arpita? Um, yes, almost. But there's one doubt also uh, along with it that can students register with one mobile number? Multiple students, can they register with one mobile number? That was also one question right, that most of the right, students right, asked right, us, right. So if there are siblings, two siblings in the same house and they have just one mobile number, let's say, of their father, so they cannot register. For every student, we need a unique mobile number, right? Yes, so yes. one number... I mean, one student, one number. So that is something that they have to go through it and then keep this in mind before registering. And in case they make any mistakes, then there's also a profile correction window right. that is available for the online right. students. You can go to the profile correction window that will be available to the students five days prior to the exam date. So let's say you have exam on X date, just minus five, the profile correction window will be open, open to you. You can go and edit the permissible fields there and you can make necessary changes. That was, I think, all of the questions. details uh, yeah. that we had to discuss for today. <laughs> right, right. right. So these were all the questions guys the students have asked so with this we are at the end of this session thank you everybody for joining thank you